Eric Schatzker is joined right now by Nobel laureate Joseph Stieglitz. Eric. Well, you couldn't ask for a better guest to talk about uh, for the president's proposals and his State of the Union address, Joe Stieglitz. Great to have you here at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Joe, you were traveling yesterday. You've only been catching up uh, at bit by bit on what the president had to say in his address. From what you've heard thus far, what do you think? Well, I think the focus on jobs is uh, welcome, needed, a little late. Uh, I thought, uh, and I pointed out this in my book, Free Fall, that what he did a year ago was uh, too little and not well enough designed. Let me give you an example. He had a tax cut, but it wasn't linked to job creation. Uh, if he had given, some, for instance, an investment tax cut, uh, tax credits, like he's doing now, uh, that says you're going to get a tax credit or tax cut if you spend the money, spend money, investment, that makes the country stronger. So I think what he's doing now in that area is is right. I'm a little worried that it, again, is not enough. The stimulus is coming to the end, end of this year, beginning of next year. The stakes are facing a major shortfall in revenue. They have this balanced budget framework. That means they have to cut back. Uh, this won't even make up for those cutbacks. So, uh, again, it's a big move in the right direction, but not enough. Can we afford to be even more interventionists than the president's proposing already? I would say we can't afford not to, because if we don't, the economy is going to be weaker, the deficit is going to be larger. The real issue is, how do we spend the money? If we spend the money on investments, then we get more growth in the short run, but we also get more growth in the long run. I've done a calculation. The critical rate of return that you need on public investments to have a lower long-term national debt is only around 6%. And the studies show that if we direct our money to technology, infrastructure, uh, education, we can get far higher than that. The big mistake is the way we bailed out the banks, where we gave them money and we, we barely got anything out of it. Uh, we didn't link any conditionality. You know, when we gave a wealth, when we formed welfare for the poor in 1996, we said, if you're going to get welfare, you have to do certain things. Look for a job, go into training. When we put the banks on welfare and gave them hundreds of billions of dollars, we didn't put any conditions like they ought to lend. <laughs> now, speaking of that, Steve Schwartzman, the CEO of the Blackstone Group, was here with me earlier today. And I have to tell you, Joe, he sounds downright scared. He says that the president's approach and, more importantly, the tone is going to cause banks to restrict lending and force the economy into a backslide. Uh, you know, this is a, just another kind of excuse that they've been using, the financial sector, you know, using over and over again. Uh, the fact is, uh, lending has been contracting well before the president made these announcements. Uh, we are, the Fed is lending them money at close to zero interest rate. What are they doing with the money? Looking around the world at the best place to invest in. And their judgment is not in America. The irony is they're creating bubbles and emerging markets, earning the angst and their anger of people in these other countries at the same time that they're earning the angst and anger back at home in the United States. But, Joe, are you certain that there are that many good credits available in the United States for these banks to be lending? Because, as we know, so many of the loans that they made before, which caused the credit growth, were bad loans. Well, what is true that the banks have a fantastic record of bad lending. We know that. But... That's a different question from saying, are there good job, pro good lending prospects out there? Back in the boom, there were still many small and medium-sized businesses that had good ideas that couldn't get money. Why? Because they were focusing on the bubble of the moment, which was the housing bubble. Now they're focusing on another bubble of the moment. You know, if we can direct our banks to doing what banks are supposed to do, which is give credit to new enterprises, to expand enterprises, uh, that would make our economy more dynamic. 
one of the interesting things is uh, there is a part of our financial sector that's doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, the venture capital mm -hmm. firms, those funding Google, funding uh, Apple, uh, all Oracle. those, they're, they're doing it. But that's not where most of our banks were, were engaged. Joe, I want to sneak in a quick question before I run out of time. Is there a risk here that the president is being too populist in his approach with about 30 seconds? No. Uh, I think the real risk is that he doesn't do enough to address the long-term problems, and that means doing something about the too-big-to-fail banks. If we don't do something about that, we're going to have uh, problems down the line. Proprietary trading, uh, the kinds of things that Volcker warned about a long time ago, uh, those are problems that have come home to roost. Really important that we do something about those. Joe, great perspective. Folks, that is Thanks. Joe Stieglitz, Nobel Prize winner, Columbia University professor.